Cheers. I love this cup. And actually, I love this cup. I love this part of the cup, but it actually says, I love e-zine articles, e-zine, e e-zine, e-zine writer articles. Dot com and I don't even know if anybody remembers anymore. Maybe Jim Edwards is remember because I think he is the one that I probably learned about this site from. I don't even know if it exists anymore. I'd have to look, I guess. But if you wrote a hundred articles for this website, then you got this free mug and a leather um, coaster and some other things. I can't remember what it was, but I still have the mug because I like the mug. It says I love on it. Who doesn't love stuff? So today, day 769 of what she up to now. She Sharon Hornellstrom here, also known as Pajama Grandma, for my own personal reasons, which I don't know if Pajama Grandma is going to die. I think I've been saying that for about a year or so now, too, because maybe she needs to go away. But it is my way of personally representing that I want to grow and create businesses for myself and for other people that help them to do what they want, when they want, where they want, with whomever they want, wearing what they want. And it's, it's because it's all about wanting to find ways that we love our life and that we feel comfortable. One of those ways is hitting the books and doing our homework. And my question today is, do you do your homework before you make decisions and choices? Or do you go with your gut instinct? I have learned that it's important to do a combination of both throughout my vast years of, of trial and error and some awesome experiences and some not so awesome experiences. So today I'm thinking about, and I was talking about the idiom, hit the books, which is one of those that doesn't have an origin. They don't know what the meaning of it is. And I checked lots of different sources because I was hitting the books. Actually, I was hitting the internet to try to find out where this actually came from. Because actually the book that I'm using has 600 idioms in it for my idiom a day thing. Um, I don't even know how I, I do know how I started it, but I'm not sure why I'm still doing an idiom a day, except for it's fun. And it's an interesting thing to do and get my mind open and look at things from different perspectives. So it's kind of an expanding activity in my mind is probably why I'm, I'm still doing it. It's an opportunity to learn something new and grow. It's kind of like having a word of the day. When we were kids, we'd have a word of the day and we would have a word and we would take that word and we'd try to find a way to use that word throughout the day so we would learn and understand the meaning of the word. It's kind of the same thing with these idioms. It's a way to look at something that I may or may not ever have even considered before and ask myself, well, how is that impacting me in my life and my businesses and what I'm trying to do in the world? Is it even impacting it? And is it important? And if it's not impacting me, maybe it's impacting people around me. And so then it, maybe it's not important to me, but it might be important to people that I'm interacting with. So that was our idiom for today. Working on the live challenge workshop, which is going to be March 23rd. And now it looks like I'm not going to be traveling. So. It's interesting. I was preparing like a mad woman yesterday for being um, on the road while delivering the live challenge workshop, which will prove to people that you can do it on the road. You can totally do it on the road. This is one of those strip. Those. It's not even a strategy. It's a. It's a way of doing things that is so powerful, and and most people don't get it. They've never even thought about it because it's it's something that should come so naturally to us that we don't even think about it. It's just automatic. But the way we automatically do things, our, um, what's it called when you have a way of doing things, our procedure or our normal way of dealing with stuff isn't necessarily the best for us. It's kept us alive, it's kept us surviving, but it's not necessarily the best way. Patterns, we, we all have patterns. And the patterns that we run to deal with things are maybe serving us or maybe not serving us. We all have patterns that do serve us. We all have patterns that we need to interrupt and change and let go of, right? And then we need to substitute them with something else. So thinking about patterns and how we can powerfully create them. And so this, this thing I teach in the live challenge workshop is a, a, pa a pattern and a foundational way of dealing with things and your business to get whatever you want. And mostly people want more customers. So a lot of the examples I share and a lot of the people that I have success stories from her, how they got more customers, more ideal customers coming to them. But it's not all about customers, it's about any result you want. Done, challenges on, God, I, I'm trying to think about a challenge I haven't done in, in an area. I've done, I guess probably not relationship challenges. I don't think I've done any relationship challenges. Probably should have, might still be married, doubt it. Uh, but I probably should do some relation, a relationship challenge. Maybe that'll be my next challenge, right? A relationship challenge. But I've definitely done a lot of health and a lot of wealth challenges. So, thinking about challenges, today I'm doing a top 20 
biggest business lessons learned in my last 47 years of business and corporate America experiences. And today is day 16, right? Day 16, yep. And it's, the, the biggest lesson is I get what I expect or you get what you expect, which I will do that video next. So I haven't talked about it yet, but boy, that's a biggie. I, I actually credit saying you get what you expect to other people with probably some of my biggest relationship challenges. I know that that was a big one in uh, my marriage. That was a big bone of contention because I truly believe that the outcomes that we get in life are, are what we expect and not necessarily what we expect at a conscious level, but what we expect in our heart and what we expect in a, in a, a subconscious level. And um, that's really hard to, geez, that's hard to swallow sometimes. That's hard to admit. It's hard to face up to that the results we're getting in our life, especially when we don't like them and we think they're bad or horrible, we've actually helped to create. Maybe we haven't 100% created them, but we've certainly had a, a part in creating them. You know, I One of the biggest things and lessons I had to learn was after my sudden cardiac arrest, I, I was you know on this journey to figure out, well, how the heck could I drop dead? Could I just drop dead um, and then still be here to to understand it and what I realized is the way I was living the choices I was making the things I was thinking the decisions I was making um, the way I was being or not being the way I was taking care of myself and not taking care of myself totally the, and those were everyday little bitty choices I either did or didn't make it was choosing not to eat meals it was it was choosing not to take care of myself it was making a, a choice to put other things ahead of ever getting any activity or movement and those things all led up to and culminated in a huge health challenge where it was entirely possible that I wouldn't be sitting here speaking today. But lucky for me, maybe lucky for you, I still am. Because I changed the choices that I was making. Instead of making them all unconscious and setting other things as a higher priority, I had to change my priorities. I had to change my patterns. I had to change what I was thinking about, what I was doing, what I was believing, what I thought was possible, what I was judging as right or wrong and really make some massive, massive shifts and changes. Um, all for the better, of course. Didn't necessarily feel for the better at the time, but all for the better in the long run. Uh, so you get what you expect. I get what I expect. And like I said, I, what it does is if I, it reminds me that if the results I'm getting in my life are not what I want, ultimately what I don't like, then I need to look at and say, okay, what am I thinking about right now? What am I doing right now? What am I believing right now? And if I want anything in my life to change in the future, I have to change what I'm thinking, feeling, believing, doing right now. Because right now is the only time I can affect, right? It's the only time that we can ever do anything. So I get what I expect it will be the topic of the live challenge workshop, top 20 countdown day 16. Otherwise, I have sort of abandoned other people's challenges this week. I realized that I was doing the One Funnel Way Challenge, and I'm like, I'm not doing the One Funnel Way Challenge. I'm not even really paying attention or watching the videos. I watched a couple of them, but I'm not doing it, so why am I even acting like I'm doing it? It's not a priority for me right now. My priority is preparing my thing, doing my own thing, providing what I am here to, to share and serve in the world. So I need to be a little selfish and pull in and focus on that instead of paying attention to what everybody else is doing. I've done my homework. I've hit the books. I've done the research. I, I've been doing the thing that I'm doing for decades. So it's kind of a no-brainer to just share it with other people. Uh, curious, what are you doing? What are you working on? What do you have questions about that you're stuck? You're stuck and you're like, I just need to know this one thing. I just need to ask this one question. Just ask it in the comments below. And I guarantee that if I don't know the answer or or don't have a, a direction or a next thing for you to do, I will for sure hook you up with somebody that does. I will I will get you to that resource and hook you up with somebody that can say, hey, do this, try that. Um, one of the biggest lessons I had to learn, and I think it was actually yesterday, talked about the, the, oh God, the importance of asking. And the answer won't always be yes. You won't always get an answer from someone, but it'll give you the courage to ask someone else, right? It's, it's a question that doesn't, that we die with, that we never ask, that, that can actually kill us, right? So ask those questions, know that you get what you expect, um, and, and own that, because that means that you have the power to change anything that you want. Uh, 
that's it. That's all I've got today. I've got a gazillion things to do as usual. And I didn't plan on having the amazing four-year-old yesterday, but I did. So the stuff I was going to get done yesterday, some of that carried over to today. So I'm going to work on that. Have an amazing day. If I can help you in any way, hit me up in the comments below. And I will, of course, be with you tomorrow.